Okay, so I'm dying to talk to you today about psychiatric issues. Mm -hmm. I don't have them anymore. Right. But I did. Mm -hmm. And you got me better from them. Okay. They sucked. Yeah, they sucked. So. My professional opinion. It, no, saw. I know, yeah, and yeah. I mean, okay. How, well, I called you on a on a Sunday. We talked about that once, but I don't think what I I don't think I told everybody that I said I want to jump out the window, and I said it like seriously. All I could think about, I had these horrible intrusive thoughts. Mm -hmm. I live in a high rise in Manhattan. I couldn't stop imagining jumping out the window. I didn't even want to. It was an intrusive, horrible thing. So I keep getting calls from parents. My kid got a tick bite, or my kid was hiking this weekend. Two weeks later, a week later, whatever, explosion of psych symptoms. It can't be Lyme because his joints don't hurt. It can't be Lyme because he doesn't have brain fog, or I don't think I have Lyme because I don't have this. But the kid, or they, now have OCD, depression, insomnia, hallucinations, right. um, night terrors, night sweats. I'm just adding the night sweats because it's another common one. But, mm. but, I mean, nobody believes me when I say psychiatric disorders can be the only manifestation of Lyme or Barnella. And I need an actual real doctor and not just me, gypsy doctor, to confirm that. So can you help me? I'm a real doctor. I can confirm that. I, um, so it's been published that that can occur. Usually it's, it's not, the only pre not the only feature. Usually there are physical features too. But, but it can It be. can. Yes, Please yes. Please tell the people. No, I can't for, for send this off anymore. It's exhausting. For sure, it can be the only manifestation. I've definitely seen that. And it does make the diagnosis more challenging. Um, frequently, it is the psychiatrist that refers the patient over. Because, Number one story in the New York, sorry, yeah. the New York Times right now is why are so many, why, why do so many kids have this explosion of anxiety? And you right. know what they never mention? Lyme, right. So Lyme can cause in children a more profound experience. I don't see young kids, but we'll see down to 16 with both parents present. And uh, a lot of them have had their illness begin when they were 12 and such. And uh, so it kind of causes a pandas and pans like presentation, which is like an autoimmune encephalitis. And it could be associated with new onset of OCD and tick disorders and narcolepsy and all these very kind of bizarre things, much of which adults don't get. But adults can get a range of psychiatric features as well. So things like OCD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, and psychosis, which are really the five biggies have all been published in association with Lyme. And it's hard sometimes to tease out what's caused by Lyme and what's caused by other tick-borne illnesses like Bartonella because Bartonella can also cro cause chronic illness and get into the brain and but can cause it, neuropsychiatric but, features as well. Sorry to interrupt you, but the one problem is pediatricians and even internists are very quick to send people to psychiatrists without looking for infections. I think it's cruel and unusual punishment to send a child, and I've seen it so many times, uh, onto an antidepressant when they just needed a little bit of an antibiotic instead. You know, they may have just needed a month or two of antibiotics. Instead, they're on Zoloft. It's not working. They're 14. I, I mean, I, I can't even tell you. Like, this, you know, the stuff you see and the stuff I see, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. And when I see treatment-resistant depression, treatment-resistant insomnia, um, treatment resistant OCD, I think to myself, Lyme, this could be Lyme or Bartonella or some infection right. or some pathogen that triggered this, that we could get better fundamentally instead of keeping kids on these medicines or keeping you on these medicines. So they did a study in Europe um, where they compared the rates of a positive Lyme test in patients in a psychiatric, hosp psychiatric hospital to healthy people. And it was a large study. It was like a thousand patients in each group and there was a very uh, high rate of Lyme seropositivity compared to the control group. It was almost double. So you say, okay, is it Lyme or is it something like Bartonella that's associated with Lyme? And it's very difficult to tease that out. And Bartonella, um, just for those who are new to this, um, Bartonella is another potential tick-borne disease. It can come from other vectors, fleas, bed bugs, right? Lice. I mean, there's like, there's a bed couple. bugs isn't, it's not agreed on the bed bugs spread Bartonella, but I've always been suspicious that they may because patients say they've gotten yeah, them from. I've always been very medicine. suspicious of the whole thing. Okay. But they, so let's not say that yeah, we for can't, sure. We can't say that for sure, but uh, yeah. fleas, lice, um, there are certain biting flies that can spread Bartonella. There's been some documentation of even spider bites. There was a, a, a case, it was a case report, a case series that was published of a family that had gotten sick one by one with this mysterious neurologic illness and uh, they, they traced it to a, a deer louse 
spider. So how gross is that? It's a spider that eats deer lice, and lice carry Bartonella, so the spider eats the lice and then bites the people, and they just had moved into this um, spider house, and... Uh, is they, spider house? Spider infested house and they got they all got sick from spider bites. So that's pretty gross. So I just um can't stand any bugs at this point, except for bumblebees, which are amazing. But apart from that, I'm scared of every bug uh, out there. Yeah. And um so yeah, psychiatric illness is uh, is a real thing. It can happen, I think, from uh infectious causes. They have to be evaluated for it to their utmost because it would be a real shame to miss something that's treatable. Um, so, so you take a case, yeah. like um, a very public case, Allie Hilfiger, wrote an amazing book, wrote yep. uh, lots of, uh, did tons and tons of interviews, did an interview with me for the Huffington Post, yeah. and she um, had 14 years of undiagnosed Lyme, which resulted in essentially a nervous breakdown. She told me she felt there were bugs and monsters invading her brain. Mm -hmm which turned out to be true. She, she finally, after four months in a mental institution, her psychiatrist brought her, in fact, to you, and you were the one who diagnosed her, which was awesome. But take us from a case like that, where somebody is starting from a very, very, very severe neuro, yeah. neuropsych yeah. issue, and okay. now, okay, so I just saw her, she's awesome, she's healthy, she had a healthy, beautiful baby, she's married, she's completely sane. Yeah, no, she's amazing. How did that happen? Hi, Ali. Um, so there's, so let's talk about another case. The, uh, I had a guy come in, his wife brought him in, and he was not violent, he was not moody, he was not angry, but he was dulled. He was just kind of like dulled and conf easily confused. And, and uh, you know, we did a workup, he had evidence of Lyme. I put him on tetracycline. He had a neuropsychiatric Herxheimer, which is exacerbation of symptoms that when you uh, treat this, these illnesses, the Herxheimer is so severe that he literally tore his house apart and they had to call the police and put him in a psych hospital and the psychiatrists at the hospital were, you know, prudent and diligent enough to keep him on the antibiotic and just treat through his um, agitation. Wow. And he came wow. out the other side. He actually wow. did really well. He turned out not to have a chronic need for antibiotic therapy. He wasn't, um, wasn't, I didn't treat him long term. It was actually a, a nice success story. Mm -hmm. uh, one of these rare success stories that I see, because usually I have to treat people for a long time. Mm -hmm. One of these rare um, instances where I can get somebody uh, better in a very rapid manner, but really dramatic and really highlighted the aspect of the neuropsych Herxheimer. So when people take antibiotics for these illnesses, they frequently get worse before they get better. And it's highly variable. Some people flare up for short periods of time and some people flare up for long periods of time. And he fortunately flared up for a short period of time and didn't have a lot of drama after that, that those first few weeks. Okay. Um, I've had other patients where it's more of a constant battle and mm. it's like you go two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one well, step back. Well, I want patients to understand that these things can flare and they're scary, but that they will pass. There's no right. way out than through. I don't know another way out than through. Do you no, know something I don't no, know? No, I, I know nothing. Um, I, I think that uh, part of the definition of depression is that you feel in the moment that it's hopeless, that yeah. it will never end, and that's how we. That's one of the ways that we define it. And um, but I always say that when there's life, there's hope. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. That was helpful. Thank you.